is the Glass Cannon Network. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Get in the Trunk, Season 4. It is Tuesday night. Is it Tuesday night? Do we do this show Tuesday nights? I am I forget. It, oh, it all mixes not. together. No Troy's idea. got a big question mark on his face, too, I see. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> exactly. I don't know where, in time. I don't know where we in time. are. I don't know what we're doing. It's, uh, it's, it's very confusing, much, much like... Uh, the night floors and the king in yellow and the places that we explore in this fantastic campaign. <laughs> Impossible landscapes uh, brought to us by the wonderful people at Arc Dream Publishing. Uh, we've had an absolute blast doing this. It's been a, a such a fun game to dig into. And a little behind the scenes here, uh, we had the break for Gen Con. And so we've been working on so much on that and we didn't play with each other for a while. Uh, Sid took a trip out of the country. Uh, uh, oh, but the yeah. most important thing uh, that we've done as a company, I think, in the two weeks since we've played together is upgraded Francis's internet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Yay! visible and audible. <laughs> <laughs> I Never know. I, better. You really I, do. I, I, the, I, only yes. time the only time you've looked better is when I've actually seen you in person. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I naturally look like. I'm not actually pixelated in real life, guys. <laughs> true, yeah, true it, fact. It, it, it was getting hard to believe, but as soon as you connected for the episode, I was just like, oh, Francis, you handsome son of a bitch. Wow. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Very uh, it few, was, it sorry, was really no. just a skin condition. It was a skin condition. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. I'm, I got to clear it up. I got to Good, good. Little lotion. Man, I just had... Th- so I've got skin issues. I'm Irish. And I go to the dermatologist a couple years ago uh, and they're like, you need this, you need this couple creams to like put on my face and deal with whatever rosacea, pinkish, drunken Irish, whatever is going on in my face. And it clears it up. It's good. You know, I stick with it for months and it clears it up. And then I just kind of like keep on it. So I am like starting to run out and I'm like, uh, I, I need a refill. And they're like, you have to come back in now uh, and get have an appointment because it's been like two years. And I should anyway, right? Because you got to like get things checked out at the dermatologist. But I call them up and they're like, uh, the first opening that we have is December. <laughs> At, like the first... <laughs> half hour that you have is December. Like it has to be a lie or this doctor just golfs five days a week and does appointments one day a week. Like it didn't make any sense to me. And I'm like, Oh, my pink's going to come back. I need, you, I need you to get me an appointment. And just to write a prescription, they need to wait until December because th- there's no 15-minute window that they can write a prescription between now and December. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's what I'm crazy. saying. I, I didn't get very far, you know, before. Like, Troy would have done the, you know, Troy's whole thing is just like, get your manager on the phone. And he'll, he'll yell at him. He'll say, I'll blow you up on Twitter. I'll post pictures. And uh, he gets what he wants. <laughs> I got news to your wife. <laughs> you let me speak to that dog. <laughs> oh, you have nudes of the receptionist's wife. <laughs> let me speak yeah. to that doctor. I, I know people. <laughs> You're like I'll dox your janitor. <laughs> <sighs> Sydney, you, I see, have uh come in cosplay tonight for those that are uh the audio audience. Sydney's cosplaying Vicky Ricci right now yes. and you look incredible. Thanks for noticing. Um, <laughs> well, what's funny is I showed up and everyone was like, oh, Sydney, you look so nice. And Francis is like, do you have a job interview later? Yeah. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying so hard to look like Vicky. <laughs> but a bunch of people online were like, how come you didn't dress up as Vicky yet? Like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Because every so often I'll, I'll like do my character uh, just for funsies. And I actually got my hair cut. I have very short hair now. Mm. Um, and I was like, you know what? Now's my time. Vicky has a little pixie cut, and I'm like, I look a little bit closer to her, so I thought, why not throw on my blazer in my hot fucking room in the summer? Um, <laughs> That's so you're welcome. This is what you get. Me and lipstick and a blazer sweating. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, the lipstick is no joke. I mean, did you have that in your collection or did you have to go out and buy that too? I There's something, and maybe other people who wear makeup can attest to this, but there's something about like keeping red lipstick even though I will never ever wear this. Like I don't wear lipstick. I, I don't wear this out. But I'm like, <laughs> one of these days, I'm going to have a reason to wear this red <laughs> lipstick. It's like me with a collared shirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got it, Troy. Imagining you in a button down. Oh my! Oh, Should I, oh, do I need okay. these? I can't even think about it. But I uh, think you yeah, used no. to wear them a little more often, Troy. The collared shirts. Yeah, I used to rock the uh, the button downs, as they call it. Actually, did you know a button down just means that the collar is a button down and not the shirt? When you refer to a button down, I did shirt, not know that. It I just refers to the collar being buttoned down. Huh. Oh. You learn huh. something new every day. I could be wrong, huh. but I heard that somewhere and I think it's true. <laughs> is, it, is it also true that men's and women's button down shirts are on different sides? Reversed. Yeah. Why? Is that true? Why? Yeah. Because women um, they need help keep us getting dressed. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Let me help you. No, I don't know. No, that, actually, that makes sense. Like the handmaidens would have to button it so it's reversed. Otherwise, it's confusing. Or vice versa, uh, yeah. <laughs> I never met a woman I didn't have to dress. So, yeah, it made sense to me. <laughs> That's true. And a woman has never let you undress her. <laughs> also oh. a fact. Isn't it, isn't it uh, reversed in Europe, too? Aren't men's European clothes the other side? Like the no, the buttons are upside down. <laughs> <laughs> Colors oh. around the waist in the, in the southern hemisphere. In, uh, the yeah. in Australia, yeah. they actually spin yeah. the other way. <laughs> you start from the top <laughs> instead of the bottom. You just start at the neck. And go down. No fact. Huh. Well, we couldn't be more excited to be back. Uh, delving back into this uh, the break is enough that um the last episode that you guys saw was recorded before our little break and this one is recorded after our little break so there has been a little bit of a of a gap so i'll, I'll just do a brief rapid fire recap to make sure the the players are in the zone make sure that you guys remember some of the most important events uh of impossible landscapes at least what you've what you've seen of it so far um i'm gonna put in a little bed here uh of us of music so the you were tasked with investigating this missing artist abigail wright you found out over a period of investigations of her apartment that her apartment is filled with so much weird stuff and things that seem out of place and out of time uh, almost a hoarder's collection in fact this is a good time to note that there's still stuff in that apartment so just fyi you didn't finish that um you found so many things that led you in so many different directions that it almost seemed like, okay, we got to step back here and, and look at the bigger picture. But while this is all happening, as soon as you get in touch with some of these things, it seems to start affecting your real lives in some way. Something odd is happening. As you go about your day to day, things feel a little bit off. Uh, everything seems a little strange. Skid's really good, uh, I'm sorry, Neil's really good friend, Fran, uh, happened to months ago be tasked to write an article about a neighbor of this woman who's been missing. Now she is off uh, doing a piece in, in Providence and Neil doesn't know why, but it feels like it's connected. It's very, uh, very disturbing. Um, most of you have in, in some way been touched and seeing this this investigation affect your real lives. Vicky Ricci handed over a, an airline ticket that appeared to be from 2015 to a an, 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 an analyst in her office at the uh, U.S. Postal Postal Inspection Service, and uh, he uh, was so sh weirded out by it. He left the office. He wasn't seen for a day. He came back all all out of whack, and he's all paranoid. Where did you get this? Who are you talking to? Why are you bringing me in on this? It's all very disturbing, but. What it eventually leads to is a realization by Bobby after going to the building manager's office that none of the tenants have been paying rent. Not just Abigail. Abigail wasn't paying rent long before she went missing. You go and try to talk to one of these tenants and he tells you that Abigail is still in the building. She's just up on 12. 12? There's three floors of this building. What the hell is this lunatic talking about? This is when you learn for the first time that Abigail had given him a copy of a book, a book called The King in Yellow, a book that Neil 
seems to know something about, something vague uh, in the artist's circle, a, a famous tale uh, of, of a play that if you saw it, you would go mad, called The King in Yellow. He doesn't know details about it at all, but he knows that it's a rumored um, phenomenon. Uh, rat on your pop, and the king in yellow will come and get you. <laughs> but he doesn't think that it's real until n now there seems to be a strange series of events and neil i believe besides roger and maybe even more so than roger to be the most consciously aware of the existence of the unnatural having really saw it firsthand in the amazon during a delta green operation so he is more inclined than anybody to believe it actually could be that dangerous you track down one neighbor he tells you about the night floors you track down another neighbor and she immediately tries to push you out and will not speak to you at all to which you then force yourself into her apartment this is the same woman that fran wrote her article about michelle van fitz you beat her to a pulp as she tries to go maybe for a weapon look like a decorative tomahawk on the wall uh you beat her burn her waterboard her with milk put out the fire resuscitate her ask her where she is she says she's in carcosa in and out of consciousness you then decide after a lengthy discussion and a lot of moral difficulty she's got to go and roger seeing images of norma whew, images of these other people in his life flashing before his eyes <laughs> snaps her neck and just as he does just as the moment of death hits he sees a flash of the yellow sign a strange cult symbol that was found in abigail's apartment only roger failed his sanity check on it and it's in his head he then puts her in the fireplace thinking that is going to get rid of the body we realize shortly after that it's not really going to do much uh it's not going to incinerate the body to the degree that you want but you don't know that yet at the time you leave the apartment to go because michelle van fitz seems to have her own entrance into this area into the night floors you go through this double door into a hallway that vicky says she has seen in a dream a long hall with t intersections at both ends, and just door 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 all along the way while in there roger opens a door and finds an abandoned not abandoned a an unoccupied apartment with a sm smell of smoke cigar smoke in the air maybe a tinge of liquor and actuarial tables old books of tables of likelihood of death possibility of death for reference at that time bobby sees down the hallway two men in suits do, 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 run past the t intersection moments later three men run by chasing them and those men are wearing gas masks and holding firearms then he hears gunshots bang 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 this immediately triggers roger and bobby to both draw their weapons maybe even vicky as well but nothing comes down the hallway at them roger says we have to get out of here you go back into Michelle Van Fitz's apartment, shut the door, and try to decide what to do next. When Neil, ice water in his veins, <laughs> says, doesn't even say anything, just drags the body of Michelle Van Fitz out of the fire, goes into the kitchen to get any utensils he can, knives, maybe a butcher knife, cleaning solvents, and says, I'm the doctor here. I will dismember this body and bag it for to get rid of it he closes the bathroom door and does this horrible deed himself while the rest of you stay all night in the apartment barely getting any sleep paranoid freaked out about what's going on in that bathroom and then roger during one of his dozes sees michelle van fitz walk out of the bathroom she says here's sure she goes to the bookshelf pulls out a slim red small book on the front of it is the yellow sign she walks up to roger and just says have you shown them roger wakes up uh, goes to that spot on the bookshelf and there it is that exact book with the exact sign and roger turns to vicky and bobby still in the room holds it up for them to see yet again and says have you guys seen this <laughs> <laughs> Jesus triggering a sanity roll that i said we would do next week oh. so 
Uh, I hope that gets you uh, sufficiently up to speed. There's a lot of stuff that I skipped, but I'm trying to uh, get you in the right headspace to realize that it is Thursday going into Friday. It is nearly dawn. You have been here all night long, and Roger, out of nowhere, stands up, grabs this book, holds it out, and says, Have you guys seen this? Vicky and Bobby turn, look at the book, and the yellow sign is grafted on the front of it. The moment your eyes lock with that sign, you hear a knock on the apartment door. <laughs> what? Roll a sanity check. Oh, oh. Bobby and Vicky. Oh, baby. Hot start. Oh. Hot start. Hot start. 41 that is under a, 48. Oh, what, what's yours, Francis? 41 under 48. Okay. Ooh, five that, under whoa. 60. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so I'm going to say Roger holds up this book. He says, have you seen this? You guys turn, see it for a heartbeat, and then the door knocks. And let's just say that takes your attention based on that roll. <laughs> and it just snaps you away from it and you just hear uh mm, I check my watch What's, what time is it it is six oh, five no. fifty oh, the witching uh, hour <laughs> the witching hour five fifty a.m. <laughs> well, let's just be quiet maybe they'll go away uh I mean I think Vicky very quietly like looks at Roger does a hand sign of like Quiet. Watch me. No. She's saying, Roger's taking out his Roger's gun. Roger's slowly <laughs> pulling out a weapon. And then he slowly puts it back. Uh-uh. <laughs> Vicky's going, no, no, no. Uh, but I'd like to sneak up to the door and just look through the peephole. Okay. Quiet. Sneak up to the door. Just as you get there, <coughs> you hear it again. Uh, the knock. You put your eye up to the people and look through. And outside you see a man, slim, maybe mid forties, late forties. He's got small silver rimmed glasses on, really short cropped black hair, very short. He's wearing a brown, kind of ratty looking suit. And his, his head is kind of turned to the side and he's knocking on the door. And just as you're standing right there, he says, Michelle? Michelle, you in there? And he's kind of like a little bit of a smile. <laughs> Where are you? Oh. What is that horrible smell? <laughs> what are you doing in there? <laughs> we missed you. Hello? Oh, man. Vicky is wide-eyed looking around at everyone else. Just like... <laughs> everyone staying silent? Well, Can I yeah, hear this in the bathroom? Completely silent. Yes. Yeah, I think Neil, I think he's probably, probably finishing up at this point. Yeah, and he's obviously. just got the knife and he's just like freezes like as he hears the snack he's like oh shit he's dead it's like he's got gloves on he's like covered in blood and he's got a tub full of like dismembered body parts he just freezes yeah Bobby's holding his breath with his hand on his gun you look down Vicky and right next to you within inches of your hand you see the doorknob start to turn did you guys lock the, the, the door or the deadbolt or the chain? We absolutely. Let me rephrase. Did you guys say <laughs> you locked the door or the chain? Go to the tape. I think we did. I think somebody I did. I would have fucking assumed yeah. that we locked this goddamn apartment. I don't I mean, think we're that. We may have killed an innocent woman, but we're not that incompetent. Yeah. 
somewhere in between the waterboarding with milk and the f- burning of this woman, somebody locked the door. <laughs> yeah, Regardless, though, I think immediately, like if Vicky no- Vicky notices it, I think she would just grab the doorknob like really quick oh. to hold it. Oh shit! All right, and you see. Well, I don't know if you see. Are you still looking out the people? <laughs> so she's still looking out the people, and he he could feel the resistance. Hey, what's wrong? What's the matter? Are you all right? And as he's blinking and kind of, you can see he's kind of like unsteady on his feet. He looks like he's drunk. All right. Vicky's making a split second decision. She's going to just bang the door open into him, hoping to knock him in the face. (laughs) <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It, it, it opens into the apartment. It doesn't oh. open out. Oh, into oh the she hallway. doesn't. <laughs> do that. She just holds it. Uh, Roger, okay. kill this guy. <laughs> I mean, I imagine Roger sees this. He's hyper aware. Yeah. Uh, realizes there's a struggle at the door. And so he just jump, 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 comes up uh, right behind Vicky. Is, the, is there like a door battle happening? No, no. She's, she's holding the doorknob and he felt the resistance. And then he kind of let it go. And Roger and was will, just saying, what's, what's wrong? What's the matter? Roger will put his hand uh, gently on top of Vicky's hand on the doorknob uh, as if to say, I got this. And then yeah. if you pull off, he'll just grab it okay. and hold it shut. Okay. So he just says, well, we missed you. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but I'd take care of that smell if I were you. It's horrible. And he just starts shuffling away. <laughs> Down the hallway. Uh, oh, I want to, I want to peek out. Okay, I, I whisper to, to Roger. I want to see what apartment he's in. Um... God, is there a way we can do a diversion here? He, but, mm. Like a stealth? He's moving. Three. Yeah, two, I just want to like stealthily one. open the door and look out behind him. All right, roll it. <sighs> oh my goodness. Are you a stealth master? It's balls. No, Are you wait. a Navy SEAL? <laughs> I am. <laughs> wait, can Roger, can, can Roger do it? I thought I had higher stealth. I don't have good stealth at all. So if you if you look at me, you ask me to do it. I nod, <laughs> <laughs> and I critically fail. Oh, oh no! no. Oh, my goodness, Jesus. over seventy. Oh, okay. oh God, no! Damn it! So, Damn it! So Andy, you that's you bad. turn the door oh, to just shit. slowly open it so that he can't hear, and there's obviously something wrong with this door mechanism from you. Ripping the chain off from the outside of of the door, and it causes a piece of wood that was splintered to just go snap, like as you're pulling it off, and it just makes this sound. And just even just peeking out the door, you can see that this guy is most of the way down the hallway towards the steps. And as that sound happens, he stops. He turns. Well, you coming out now? And he starts walking slowly toward you we gotta kill this you're guy. fine you're fine it's all right come <laughs> i'll tell uh, you what happened it was a great time and he's like walking toward the door all right close it, close it. we close the door or we can do this you, you gotta do this i <laughs> just gotta do this I'm, I'm, I'm sorry but we cannot we can't, we can't kill another we person kill we, we, we don't, don't have to kill him person if we let we him need, go we right. need information. So either we like pretend to be Michelle from inside the apartment or we let him in and we interrogate him. We can't just murder him. <laughs> right, okay. but what happens after the interrogation? We bring him to the cops? Yeah, what no yeah. Well, how do we fucking pop his head off? <laughs> <laughs> That's the, the thing people, is like the more people that get involved in this, the, 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 either if they're not one of us, they either have to be silenced or I, I there's no way to silence this man besides like, you, what, what like we suggest? have to cover our tracks with all we these have to cover people. Our tracks. Can hey, Vicky, because... not knowing how the two women how alike they sound, could Vicky? I was just she, thinking. 
Yeah, could she pose as this woman from behind the door? Just as her voice, like, would that? Is there any way that 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 could be effective? I mean, Mich- Michelle had sort of like a non-accent, right? She was just like, "Can I help you?" Like she was kind of whoa, sick. <laughs> Damn, wow, girl. She's like, uh, I, she's, that was she's a good a impression. I think if Sydney can do the impression, then that should work. Because <laughs> that sounds like a yeah. Handler, what, what are your thoughts? I'm what? I'm not here to tell you if it <laughs> might work. That, I mean, that you that's tell a, me what you do, I tell you what happened. All right, if we're not going to kill this guy, then this is the oh, the best, ne- the next best option. How about this? We try this, <laughs> and but if I do we, a really bad job, then we kill him. <laughs> then we kill him. <laughs> what are we telling him? What are, what are, what are we telling him? But just that she, like Michelle's fine, go away. No, no, no. I'm going to pretend to be Michelle. I wouldn't and I'm just... use the third person. That's yeah, just no. one, yeah, yeah, right. one yeah. suggestion. I'm fine. Michelle is fine. <laughs> Michelle is fine. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> tired now. I'm so <laughs> tired. I'm Michelle. <laughs> I'm, I'm Michelle. I'm, good, I'm good night. Woman. I'm a woman. <laughs> I'm a woman. <laughs> Good night. Uh, I'm a woman named Michelle. Good night. <laughs> Come back here. I'm Michelle. Come here. Okay. Uh, Let's think quick. He's walking back yep. up. Roger, you're holding the door. What does Roger do? As he starts what? stumbling back up the hallway, Roger, you can see and identify immediately that the man is intoxicated. You can actually smell a little waft, even just opening the door of the presence of brandy and cigars just like in the hallway from this guy he just he was in that party this. room yeah he was getting I mean, drunk in a, that extra cleaner party room this is yeah, classic kind of yellow floor. man this is hedonism yeah. uh yeah i mean i look to vicky because it we if we bring him in we can question him but it's not like well have a good night sir you know yeah. the, the, we, i'm sorry there's no other way out of this yeah. for delta green agents so uh, i look to you do you want to or do you want to try and talk? Close the door. Close, Close the door? All right, so he just... Wham! Shuts the door. And he, making his way back up the hallway, almost jolts from the shock of how hard the door was slammed. And just... Well, actually, this is outside of your visuals, right? So mm-hmm. we'll just say you slam the door. And then you hear... Oh, fuck. Fuck, 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 fuck. And then... Footsteps moving away. No, no, no! Fuck! All right. Wait. I'm going after him. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, we gotta find out. What opens the door and just... Grab (laughs) grab him. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Messiah. Grab him. Messiah! (laughs) Uh, You open the door... And he's gone. You don't see him. Shit. I yell, Michelle! <laughs> Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, come back here! <sighs> and you hear footsteps on the stairs. Michelle! And I start walking towards the footsteps. Start walking towards the footsteps. And... It sounds to you with your high awareness like he went down the stairs. Okay. I start going down the stairs, but I'll go, I'll move stealthily. Okay. Go ahead and roll stealth. Uh, crack, uh, actually, yeah, crack guy. Uh, pass with a 35. Okay. You look over the kind of part right in the middle that lets you see down all the way as you're moving slowly down and you see this wavering hand a thick ring on one of the fingers looks like a class ring or something uh just coming like holding on to the banister uh coming around and he's a full floor below you and then moves out of the stairwell on the ground floor like on uh abigail's floor uh all right then i want to like I want to just sprint down and hop over the balcony to go down quicker, like, you know, like leap over the side of the the staircase to go to the next landing. Nice. Okay. You can do it at a minus 40%. Uh, Well, first of all, are you not going to do it stealthily? No, now it's uh, urgent. Okay. 
So take a minus 40 on leaping over the rail because you, sir, have a fucked up ankle. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. oh shit. Right, I'm not so gonna make, on the athletics. I'm not going to make this, but I will try it. God. Why didn't I choose to be an orthopedist? <laughs> 78 <laughs> yeah. over 20. Yeah, so you just uh, go to go, and your ankle is just killing you. You're like, ah! Oh! I mean, it really hurts. And it also, you spent all night just like sitting there in a room, and it's just no movement, and it's just kind of like stiff and a little swollen, and you just know you don't have it. Uh, you can walk down the stairs, but you just didn't have what it took to skip a floor. Right. We'll say uh, Roger goes down after him, at least to a certain extent, and uh, and if you come out onto that ground floor, you don't see him. He's gone. Out and out on the street. Uh, roll uh, awareness. Alertness, sorry. I keep calling it awareness. Alertness. Oh, my God. Ice, ice, ice cold. Uh, 85 over 80. Jeez. Oh, okay. Oh, so, geez. yeah, something about that shock of pain to you, whatever it was. Uh, the whole night getting to you. So he's, he's gone. In the wind. He's in the wind. Now, here's the other thing. Um, let's take a pause here. He's gone. You look around. He's gone. Actually, no. Let's keep going. Roger, what do you do in that moment? Fuck. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bold choice. Oh, man. He really said it, didn't he? <laughs> you go with your first instinct. That's what I always say. He just looks down one end of the street. Except the other. Oh, you go out of the apartment building? Yeah, yeah, because I was following him all the way out to see if I see him. When you came out from the stairwell, you didn't see him at all. So if you go outside, you also don't see him. What you do see, uh, it's a very muggy, cloudy morning, and you see sort of the, the distant tendrils uh, toward the east side of light uh just of the day beginning you're at dawn basically when this happens what's what time of year of it is it again it is august 17th 18th something like that it's like the time it is right now in real life <laughs> I was gonna say. uh like basically that. the time it is right now so um if you roger can poke his head out the building and you don't see uh anybody walking actually at this hour you know what maybe there's a guy just walking a dog coming by the building you gotta kill him <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say murder say. him murder the dog yeah he's just you gotta to kill him safe. both he saw you come out of that building they have no choice he looks at the guy and he says hey what uh what kind of dog you got there it's uh this is shiba you know i'm sorry what it's a Shiba Inu. <laughs> Those dogs are uh, dangerous, you know. They fucking eat cats. <laughs> I, uh, I, I didn't know that. <clears throat> yeah, he's smoking a cigarette. Do you uh, own any cats? No, man. Fuck cats. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a cat guy, man. And the Shiba Inu is like peeing right now on the side of the curb. And he's just standing there waiting. Grabs a cigarette. Not a cat guy. Own a Shiba Inu? No, yeah. Maybe you should keep it that way. <laughs> and he goes back in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange exchange. Once again... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Roger comes down. Uh, all right, we'll go Cat back lover. into the uh, we'll go back into the apartment. Bobby, a couple okay. feet. Can I say? Uh, uh, okay, can I get this straight, Bobby? Are you a few feet behind uh, Vicky, who's at the door? Yeah, I'm. I'm right there by the door. Hand on your gun, but Hand it's still on the holstered. Gun still and holding breath, uh, ready for God knows what to come through that door. Got it. And Neil, can I say you were in the bathroom, <laughs> bloody gloves, and just holding completely still? Like, yeah, I think once once I hear the door open and like stuff happening, movement, then he just starts hustling. 
and starts like packing the body parts in the plastic bags, starts like cleaning using his forensic knowledge to as quickly as he can eliminate any trace of this. Okay. You guys are waiting for like Roger to drag this guy back into the apartment and Roger comes up solo. And I assume you're just coming back into the apartment, right, Raj? Yeah. You come up. Yeah. (coughs) Gives the secret code clearance and goes into the apartment. Roger, first thing you see when you walk through the door behind Vicky and Bobby is that the fireplace is gone. (laughs) And there is no double door behind them to anywhere. It is just a solid brick wall with like paintings and shit on it the sun's coming up yeah oh yeah yeah you two turn around Whoa. you see the, the whole apartment itself you turned away for a moment and the whole back of the apartment is gone it was just there a moment ago everybody give me a sanity roll on unnatural and uh let's talk some turkey as the sun rises oh god 44 and a roll on unnatural <laughs> automatic fail do you click no, no, failures no, 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 no. again no it's a sanity ch- roll against unnatural as opposed to like violence or helplessness it's against unnatural so it's a oh. sanity check well this is real bad because i have failed which means i have reached my breaking point oh, oh. no oh, oh. Oh, oh man, you could project. Yes. You oh, could kid, project. You got to project. Got to project. We need you. We need you. So wait, you were one point away, mm-hmm. and you just failed, and you didn't critically fail. You just failed. Yeah. And you come back into the apartment, and something about this guy you don't know just like getting away, and seeing that the everything that was there, the fireplace you utilized is just gone. Uh, it something just gets to you as the sun rises, and it puts you to a breaking point. You can project this, or you can take it. Up to you. Do I get to know the damage first? The damage? Yeah. How much sanity damage it would be. I don't oh, know it would be the, one. It would be one. It'd be one. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'll project it onto onto Norma. Okay. One to Norma. Okay. Oh man. What so about does the your, others? Does her score go down by one now, or no? Uh, actually, yes. Her score goes down by one. Her bond score goes down by one. Your willpower points go down by one but you don't take that point of sanity damage. Okay. Normally you roll for it. It's a 1d4, but when it's just one, you just, you take one. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to be able to project much longer. Yep. So, oh, so, okay. So we're rolling uh, this against our uh, what we have for unnatural? No, 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 I'm sorry. You're rolling this against your current sanity. Okay, okay, good. All right. I'm just trying on. to get more detailed about, like what I'm supposed to say is roll a sanity check against violence or against helplessness or oh. against unnatural. Those are the three kinds of events that can cause you psychological damage in the game if i say violence for example roger doesn't have to roll he just takes the effects of a failure or i'm sorry of a success um so which by the way uh just getting into the nitty-gritty of mechanics we got wrong troy i got wrong Hmm. roger should have taken sanity damage for that fight with michelle van fitz he just takes the effect of a success and in this case, it was uh, one, one D six. Ah, so you still oh. would have taken one, but it's okay. I forgot about it. And now you're at a breaking point. I don't want to screw around with it, but just going forward, let's try to remember yeah. that. Um, okay. Sorry. You guys, what did you roll Francis? Uh, I got 44 under 48. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <clutch>. critical success. <laughs> wow. Very wow. clutch. Very, very clutch. Uh, and then Sid, I got 13 under 65. Okay, nice. so both of you guys kind of expected it. You knew that this was going to happen. You knew this place was messed up, and so it doesn't throw you off too much. Uh, all right, let's... Um, okay, another point of housekeeping while uh, we're letting Neil finish up bagging a dismembered body. Um, you guys, it's a new day. I would like you to level up all of your checked 
abilities. Oh, nice. um, so it's it's a new day. Give yourself. Uh, what did we say? Did we say we were going to do one point or one d three points? I can't remember. I can't remember. I thought it was one point. I thought it was if it was point. if we missed yeah if we missed a roll the yeah. day before. Let's we do get one, one point. point. I might bump bump it up at some point uh, if there's gaps. But like for right now, day to day in the first adventure, let's do one point. Anything you checked goes up one point. Remove the check. Uh, okay. Additionally. Uh, you will all experience fatigue uh, for the day because you did not sleep. You did not get restful uh, bed rest. And so you will take a minus 20% to all skill checks for today until you get sleep. Wow. You can divert that if you feel like you really need to um, by heavily smoking or taking some other drugs like a speed or something like that oh, but those man. effects will whittle away at your willpower um, you but yes until you get rest again you will take a minus 20% on everything um, yeah nice okay. so Roger comes back in the apartment has changed let's let's say Neil finishes okay I'm going to say Neil finishes his job and he opens the door. I'm going to give the, the scene to Neil for the moment. Okay. So I have to make a sanity check now too, right? Seeing uh, the changes? Yes. Now that you open the door and uh -huh. see the change. Okay. 34 under 56. Okay. So Neil comes out. He's got, he's pulling off the dish gloves. Snap snap and if you look behind him into the bathroom you can see these like piled up glad trash bags uh, stacked neatly next to the bathtub and from what you can see there's no other evidence that anything happened in this bathroom <laughs> Jesus <laughs> and he comes out and he looks around sees the missing fireplace and the doors he says what was the commotion we uh, had a visitor. Uh, we don't know who it was, but they were looking for Michelle Fitz. Are there any windows? Mm-hmm. There's windows, right? Mm-hmm. She so looks out the window, like sees dawn breaking, and says, I'm going to need some help getting these out. We have to get these out of here. Boy, gesturing back at the bags. What do we do? Um, Messiah. What? What happened? Where'd he go? Has, uh, has she been a uh, guy outside? And I, I hope that I fucking lost him. She be, you know, the dog. She be, you know. Yeah, it's a it's a dog that is uh, unnaturally violent towards cats. <laughs> what? Um. Uh, okay. I think. That was... I think we're all a little tired. Yeah. Um. Yeah. On edge. Um. The guy at the door. Pretty sure he was a resident. We've never seen him. I've never seen him. Short black hair. Um. He was definitely drunk. Um, we will cross that bridge when we get to it. But uh, Murno, you're right. Let's let's take these bags. I gotta get to work. Um, what <clears throat> what is our plan? When are we coming back here? All right. We dispose of this body. Me and Mur now. Um, do we have a car? Uh, Do we have access to a car? Hmm. Only what you came with. The, uh, Delta Green didn't give you a car. Yeah, so if like you does, had does a car anyone in the city, us, like... I don't know, because uh, I don't have a car. Does anyone Does anyone have a car? I, I'm sure no. both... Uh, I'm sure both Bobby and Vicky could have an access to a car, but you'd have to requisition it yeah. from yeah. your job, um, right. which you just have to file some paperwork. That's all. Just some paperwork. <laughs> official case number that kind of stuff you know <laughs> easy 
Murnau, you, you have an idea you want to get somewhere? You want to get rid of this body somewhere? Yeah, well, I don't want to just dump it out in the back alley. Yeah, right. it's got to be far from where we are. Okay, okay. All right, here's the plan. I'll go back to my office, requisition a car, come back here, me and Murnau drive out into the Pine Barrens in Jersey and dump his body. <laughs> Ow! That's Francis! It. That's it. Criminal! Amazing. We need, to, we need to disappear any evidence of this body and and we need to we need to continue on trying to figure out Oh wait. Do we have on. any does anyone do we have like fake uh, IDs? Do we have like alternate I- identities? No, we have the FBI credentials, but it's in our names, correct? Or I think I said that you have aliases. Yeah. Oh, we do have aliases. Okay. Because the- if someone could rent a U-Haul alternately, instead of like you like using your official like requisition of a car, ah, use a, uh, use, an, use a fake ID to rent a U-Haul and then take these body parts out. If we can have like get some, if there's some. Uh, uh, cardboard boxes put the bags in boxes look like we're moving some stuff out might not cause the same amount of suspicion as piling trash bags into the trunk of a, of a federal federally requisitioned car um and then we can also use those bags boxes to take out any of this stuff that we want to take a look at later like some of these books and stuff all right burnout's clearly not your first time disappearing a body i like where your head's at <laughs> let's do this yeah <laughs> I like your plan. So lost, let's go. Lost let's a go. lot of patience <laughs> <laughs> over the years. So okay, with the so, yeah, credentials. So Murnau and Makeshift are going to Makeshift. Are you going to be the one who rents a U-Haul with the with the FBI credentials, right, under somebody else's name or under under the alias Makeshift? Yeah, it's <laughs> this is the confusing uh, part. Oh, from Mr. <laughs> makeshift. Uh, yeah, I wish makeshift? we dug into this because yeah, it really shouldn't have been like that. But whatever. Um, really, I think the way that it should be is your agent name should be some kind of a name, like a last name. You know, so uh, your agent whatever, and then you have a made up first name that. Uh, so mm-hmm. makeshift is obviously a made up last name, which <laughs> makes it tougher. But <laughs> mine's a last name. Mine's a real last name. Yeah, yeah, right exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like you could Perfect. be. Uh, so and not even like a U-Haul, like especially like 1996, like one of these like fly-by-night, like yeah. Lower East Side, like rental places. Yeah, like a mom and yeah. pop, uh, yeah, storage spot or exactly. something. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Spray painted guy with a van. Uh, yeah, man van. with a van. <laughs> yeah, man yeah. with a van. Man with a yeah, van. Get the. All right, sounds good. So you two are going to go rent a car and dispose of the of the body, Vicky. You're. Uh, it's 6:30 in the morning. Where yeah, are you going? I, uh, she has to get to work. She's got to get in early. She has to work. She has to actually work at her job and finish some some case stuff. Otherwise, she's going to start losing like bonds. But also game wise, she's going to get in trouble at work. Um, also, it's 630 uh, in the morning. Are you going directly to your office at 630 in the morning or are you going home first? No, she's she's going to go directly. She's going to. You have wash the smell her. of cooking flesh on your clothes. Oh, are you going directly God. to work, or are you gonna go wash off go the death. home first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's, she's gonna go, the, she's gonna go home. No, she should go home. Clean. She's not washing the shower. Fuck, she's so freaked out. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. uh, she's gonna leave now. Extra time to go home. So yeah. Okay. Uh, and then what about Raj? Um, my covered in blood. Uh, you've got some blood, yeah. You're not covered in blood. <laughs> All right. It's 6.30 you, you in the morning. You could cover it up. I'm going to, uh, go stand outside of Norma's apartment to catch her on her way to work. Okay. So, to <laughs> fulfill covered this. Blood. Ruin to, her day. <laughs> to fulfill <laughs> this Freaky. projection of sanity loss. Because uh, okay. uh, he hasn't spoken to her since he walked out. On Wednesday uh, night. That was Wednesday, Wednesday night. Wednesday night. And he's not in his right mind uh, and thinks this is a good idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. Amazing. Uh, all right. So let's start with, let's start with Norma scene. We see Roger standing outside of this apartment, uh, just smoking a cigarette and waiting and then coming out the door purse, turning, making sure doors locked to click is Norma doesn't notice him. 
uh, and just like starts walking down the street, clap, clap, clap in her heels. Uh, hey. Oh, J Jesus. Roger, what the fuck? What are you doing here? Sorry. I, what, uh, what, what time do you start work? You look like shit. Huh? Yeah. What are you doing up this early? So it is about 7.45, and she's uh, just walking to work. I, I, I couldn't sleep last night, so I just uh, started walking around the city. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm glad you came. I, uh, I, I don't have a lot of time to talk, but I, I wanted to apologize. I, I left a message on your machine. I, I don't know why you didn't call me back. I, I understand, you know, it's... I, I was rude. I shouldn't have made you do that on Wednesday night. And I, I was just having fun. And I wasn't thinking about you. I was thinking about me and my fun. And um, I'm just sorry. Yeah, no, no, it's fine. I uh, I just don't, uh, don't think it's a good idea for me to do those kind of uh, hard drugs. Yeah, of course you're right. Of course you're right. Um, I'm sorry. I, I won't, it won't happen again. I'm sorry. Maybe we could just... Why don't you skip work? It's just, uh... Why don't we head upstairs and I could, uh... Clean up and... Maybe get dirty again. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Roger, I would love to, but I've got a presentation today. Come on, come on. I've got a big one today. Oh, Wait, fuck. I got Roger. a presentation. <laughs> 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 at the gas station you gotta you have a powerpoint you gotta give it the, no, the gas I station I got a presentation for you oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I got a powerpoint <laughs> for you <laughs> I got a presentation for come you on, come on. And, and, and maybe like he, he grabs her wrist just kind of playfully but um, you know it's, it's awkward <laughs> he looks terribly he's like, yeah he's like come no, on come on It'll hey no no I can't I can't I can't I promise how about this I'll call you uh, I'll call you today when I get home and maybe if you get some rest we could go out tonight it's Friday night you know what we just forget out. about it just forget about it I'm sorry I even came I'm, I'm just gonna head home and I'll Roger just forget it forget it and he just he just Roger, storms off what the fuck and she's just left alone on the street as you walk away and she just shakes her head and just gives you the finger to your back <laughs> And then turns around and starts walking back again toward work. <laughs> Cut to mom and pop, shady ass, Lower East Side car rental joint. <laughs> uh, ring, ring. The bells go off on the, that are hanging over the door as uh, who walks in? Both of uh, you? One of you? Both of us. I think Myrna is going to take the lead, though, because he's got the real name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, we both walk in. Okay, you come in. It's eight o'clock. There's an empty desk. Nobody's in there. And it has a, a smell, residual smell of like oil and gasoline, just like in the air um, as you walk up to this dirty desk. But there's a bell on the desk as well. All right. Uh, Bobby rings a bell. Bling, 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 bling. We both yeah, ring it. yeah, I heard you. I heard you one second, for Christ's sake. And then this guy comes around the corner. Big, heavy set dude. He's got a steaming cup of black coffee. It's like smoke coming up from it. Comes out, sets it down. What can I do for you? Do you have a reservation? No, no, sorry. Uh, it's a last minute thing. Uh, we just need, got some last minute move we need a van or if you have a box truck something like that if you don't have a reservation pal i got i mean i got nothing uh and he starts like looking through some papers just like shuffling through this like mess of papers in front of him okay we leave uh, and go to another place hold on a second hold on a second i got i got a car here i got a car here i got a, a miata I got a Miata. A Miata. Are a you Miata. fucking kidding me, Is that going to work for you? Are you kidding me? A Miata. 
No. Is it the opposite day? Is that one of your policies to give customers the exact opposite of what That's they all come I got. in for? Make a reservation. Make a reservation. Fine. Thanks. Bye. We leave. We go to another place. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was ready to, I was ready to pull out a Fidski and just be like, how about now? <laughs> a $5 bill. Yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> five dollars. That's how much I get paid to the CIA. I wonder, I wonder if Mr. Lincoln, Lincoln might be able to reserve a van. <laughs> uh, there is no other place around here, like around the, the Lower East Side, that isn't, you know, high profile. It is in a U-Haul. Seriously, kind of okay. I, I'll pull out a fifty-dollar bill. I'm like, all right. You have anything in a truck or a van? Well, let me see what I can do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and he gives you somebody else's car. <laughs> oh, uh, good. And uh, he'll take a little heat later today, but he doesn't give a shit. He's got $50 in his pocket, bucks. man. God goes a long right. way in 1996, 1995 money. Yeah. Bobby's pissed. Bobby's <laughs> pissed. Mark it off on your character sheet, Francis. <laughs> Francis. <laughs> Minus 50, 50 gold pieces. Minus uh, 50. 50 gold pieces. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> We're paying for everything in Kruger ends for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Mark it off fifty gold. Fifty gold uh, pieces. All right. He gets you. Uh, he gets you a truck. All right. Um, but it's pretty dumpy. Uh, we'll say it's a Ford uh, truck. You know, like an eighty-two Ford truck. Uh, pretty beat up. And um, yeah, so you take that and and are going to load up the parts. Michelle, yeah. Fitz, yeah. Yeah, well, and we're heading back to the apartment. Um, I, this uh, Murnau's idea: we put her, we get empty boxes and put them in boxes, make it look like we're moving. That sounds good. We'll yeah, that. and if there aren't, if we know that there aren't any boxes in the apartment, we can stop and like to like at a store and like get some like moving boxes. Right. Uh, okay. Great. So I don't know. I think it's a pretty good uh, a pretty good plan. But let's let's do I a roll. About, I think about this stuff all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ready. Uh, let's do a roll. Let's do. Um, hmm. Well, I'll let you guys decide. Uh, we could do criminology for how you handle yourselves. We could do stealth for just making sure you're not seen by anybody. Uh, we could do. I don't know persuade or something if uh now let's not do persuade disguise uh something that would like indicate this criminal activity that you're doing here and how you'd get away with it okay right. i've got i've got 60 criminal or sorry 70 criminology yeah you take the lead oh. you do that. all right well you know what that high you really don't have to roll in this case nobody's like coming for you uh okay. there is not you don't have heat on you and everything like that so okay. uh i'll say i'll say you're good um go ahead and uh you can load up the body, and now you're driving to Jersey. <laughs> yeah, we're driving to Pine Barrens. Where else? And where we, else and we the take body? like all these like books and stuff. We load up like all the like books, like everything that looked weird. Oh. We're gonna load those up in, in a box too. Okay. So the books that you don't have on your person are gone when the fireplace vanishes. All those bookshelves of oh. weird books are all oh. gone. Okay. So the other books that are in there are all normal books. Oh, okay. That are in like the front part of the apartment. Is there anything else we need to disappear from this apartment? Like anything we've left behind? Like have we let can we do like a, a scrub down? Is that is? Yeah, I want. I wanted to do like one last pass over the rest of the apartment with right. like maybe a forensics check to get rid of any other traces. Okay. Of, sounds good. Of Go us ahead. or her. Roll forensics. Forensics. Uh, Eleven. Critical Eleven under fifty success, man. Neil has been well, on Neil's point. On it. Neil's on yeah, it, man. Between uh, like you know, with makeshifts, with, between your like knowledge of criminology and me with my forensics and everything, we're like perfectly suited to doing something like this. Yeah, we're covering as the a tracks. pair. <laughs> yeah, I gotta say, tracks. you guys are doing well so far. Um, so you clean the the apartment is clean. The body is loaded into this Ford truck. And are both of you driving to Jersey? I don't have um, a license. So. Okay, I guess I'm driving to Jersey. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll go solo. Are you going, Murnau? <laughs> I'm going, yeah. 
oh, yeah. are how yeah. what are you going to do with the with the body when you get out there like are you going to bury the body are you going to throw it in water are you just going to throw it in the woods like what, what's your plan i was thinking bury it bury it okay nice, so nice do you have deep. shovels shit um we're gonna stop by the the um who would have shovels? Myrna, do you have shovels? So you're going to have to go buy shovels. We're going to have to buy shovels. Myrna, you, you don't shovel. have shovels. They have great deals on shovels in Jersey. <laughs> they buy do. shovels in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I presume you'll pay cash for the shovels. Of course, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll put it on excellent. my slab. <laughs> excellent. I have tons of cash. I'll, I'll pay for the... I've uh, got movie cash. <laughs> all right, all right. Movie so cash. we get some, we get some, we get some uh, shovels. We're headed out to the Pine Barrens. Uh, this is great. Nice. This is like that episode of Sopranos. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, is the body going to get up and run away? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the way, I don't we're going to discuss. an interior decorator. Yeah, we're going to discuss philosophy. And, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> we'll eat eat uh, frozen ketchup packets. And, um, <laughs> that would make a whole day of it. All yeah. right, so we're going to cut away from you guys as the truck starts to move over the George Washington Bridge out of New York City. And we cut to Vicky Ricci arriving uh, at her at her office. Cleaned up now, changed, new clothes. Yes, changed. Okay. Uh, red lipstick. Don't smell like red lipstick, mascara. I'm dolled up. I don't smell like burning hair and body. <laughs> milk. Mil- oh, I smelled, milk. Oh, smells. Oh, the milk was worse. <laughs> Milk and blood. Um, <laughs> the milk, milk was blood. worse. <laughs> well, what, smell. The milk does get blood out uh, of does stains it? on clothing. Yeah. The enzymes oh, wow. in milk break down uh, the blood stains. So if that's you guys, enough. yeah, don't ask me how I know that. That's um, disturbing. Okay. <laughs> anyway. yeah, that's right. For everyone Anywho, at home planning a murder. Uh, she Vicky, shows. Sorry, go ahead. You go. She shows up with a coffee for Carl, the security guard. Mm-hmm. Um, who is one of my bonds who we've never introduced, but I'd like to keep my bonds as strong as possible now that we're getting down to nitty gritty sanity. But uh, I think as she's coming through the metal detector stuff, um, hopefully Carl's there and she would uh, say hi to him, but like she's in a rush. Carl! (laughs) Hi, Vic. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, I brought you this, I gotta run upstairs. I wish we could chat. Uh, How's it going? How's your sister? She's great. She's great. Thank. Oh, I needed this. I needed this. And he, you know, he's me. reaching down to grab a small bottle of Jim Beam that you know he keeps <laughs> uh, below the desk to just give it a little punch. You she know says, Carl. You know his she, style. She says nothing. She gives him a little wink, uh, and she goes, "Hey, happy Friday." You too. You too. And he's just not even paying attention to you. Yeah. And she, um, she continues on. And you swipe your uh, card to get into the building, and it goes, eh. Oh. And Carl stops and turns. Everything oh. all right? No, 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 that's weird. And he sets weird. the coffee down in the gym beam, and he starts to grab his gun. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he sets the coffee down in the gym beam, and he, still, he comes walking over to you, <laughs> big beer gut. Oh, that's so weird. Let me try again. Let me just see. Sometimes I'm... <sighs> like rubbing the card and she uh, tries to swipe it again eh. <sighs> oh my uh, god something I... might be up with your card come over here come here and he was... walks you over to the desk I was doing this last week too I don't know I feel like I need a new one yeah yeah give it to me give it to me and he takes yeah. it and he puts it on this swipe thing and you hear eh. yeah, behind the desk and he's just like huh and then he looks up at the screen and he's like looks at you He's like, uh, it's been flagged, Vic. Uh, just, um, just for supervisor approval. That's all. Um, I'm sorry. I got, yeah, sorry. I don't know what's up. It's not me. It's certainly not me. I just got a call upstairs uh, to your office. That's all. Uh, they can approve uh, you. I'm sure it's just a misunderstanding. Carl, Carl, wait, 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 wait. I, I have to get a new card anyway. I'm going up there. I mean. Just let me do it, and I'll just go tell them, because i got to get it reprinted. Vic, you, you know I, I hate to do this to you. I, it's, not a, uh, it's not a big deal. Let me just... It says just call supervisor approval, that's all. I just got to call upstairs. I know, it's but not a big deal. Carl, I'm... Is something wrong? No, no, I'm just... I'm behind on 
some of my case files. I've kind of been putting stuff off, just dealing with like life stuff, you know how it is. And I really don't want to be in more hot water. And this is just another check, you know, on the tally marks of things that I've been fucking up lately. And I just don't want them breathing down my neck. I had to get the new card. I put it off. I saw the emails. I just didn't. I'm a little fast. Right, so go today. ahead and roll uh, persuade. Oh. Um, <laughs> you take a minus twenty percent because you oh. look rough. You look uh, rough. You look like uh, something's off with you. I showered. Um, I'm not <laughs> a red gonna, lipstick. A red I'm lipstick. Not, I don't have lipstick. <laughs> well, unless unless you did something to get rid of the fatigue, which like you don't have to. It's I'm not saying like you're well, foolish if you don't do that. Just a little what about cocaine. The, um, it is damaging. <laughs> Remember, you also have willpower point damage that you did not recover because you didn't rest. Oh, God. Um, what about the smoking? Can I if I smoke? Because she does smoke. Like, what if she kind of chain smoked on the way here? What would that do to me um okay it, w- it would give you 1d6 hours so go ahead oh. and roll a d6 and let's see because all because now it's like nine o'clock yeah okay so it's been three hours <laughs> since you would have needed to start so if you roll more than a three you're okay five five okay nice. so yeah you you don't have to take the minus 20 yet a little bit later okay. you may have to and after this first block you start taking will point the power damage every time you roll for the chain smoking i'm just so afraid of what the flag could be because of that fucking airline ticket that i should not have sent to the analyst it's making me so yeah. nervous Paranoid. that he <laughs> he tattled on me <laughs> uh okay so persuade yes yeah okay oh god i thought that was a 70 i was so worried okay that's gonna be a 12 under 31 nice 12 under 31 okay he says all right go ahead Uh i'll catch you on my way out we got to catch up thank you carl you're a lifesaver oh my god i owe you and click 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 uh you get into the elevator and there's uh, a man in front of you he walks ahead uh he's wearing a suit, holding a briefcase, black suit, black briefcase, and he walks into the elevator right ahead of you, the one that you're getting into. Uh, You get into the elevator and turn around. He's standing to your right. As the doors close, there's a natural reflective property to the metal of the doors. And as they close, you see standing next to you a man with a briefcase and he seems to be looking at you through the reflection and you see yourself and you see a mannequin wearing a wedding dress what the fuck just looking at you and she reaches into her bag takes out her lipstick and pretends that she's like looking at the mirror to like apply the (laughs) lipstick and she's just like you you look in your bag you pull out the lipstick and look into the reflection and it's just you you see yourself normally (coughs) it's just trying to apply the lipstick with a steady hand we see this guy just like give you a side long glance like a little weirded out bing you get up to your floor you come out and uh, what do you do? Uh, she is going to try uh, to swing by. Um, I forget her name every time. Rebecca, Stephanie. Carly. Carly? <laughs> Carly it no. actually is Carly. It's Carly. It's Carly? No. Carly I wrote Carly. it down. Carly. I'm scrolling through. I even through joked my... I was like, yeah, it'll be Carly or something like that. And it actually was Carly the first time that we. <laughs> oh, it is Carly. Okay. That's made great. up the name. She's going to swi- try to swing by Carly's to see if Carly knows what's going on. Okay, you swing by Carly's and she's not there. She's not at her desk. It's early, but she's usually here by now. Uh, She's not there. Uh, She leaves a note. uh, uh, Page me or call me when you can, Vicky. Uh, And that's when you hear, hey, uh, Vic, a voice from across uh, the cubes, leaning out of his office, is George Miller, this is your boss. 
Hey, Vic. Oh. Miss you got a minute? Mr. Miller, yeah, 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 uh, yes, of course, of course. Uh, give me, yep, I'm coming. Here Thank I come. you. And he goes back into his office and sits down. Uh, yeah, fuck. Uh, she goes, I mean, she's right there. She can't she's go right anywhere. There. I mean, she's busted. She right there. She right goes to right his there. office. Uh, you walk up to his office, you walk in the door, and... He's sitting back there. You know this guy to be a bureaucrat, a nice enough guy, but just kind of a, he seems nice a lot of the times, but he just seems nice. You know what I mean? So uh, you come in, you walk through the door uh, and he's just like, hey, uh, Vicky, um, uh, sorry, come on in. Uh, I just wanted to take a few minutes uh, and I think we need to talk about this. And uh, he gestures down at his desk and you see a human arm on his desk. <laughs> what the fuck? And it looks like Michelle Van Fitz's watch is on the arm and it's just what sitting the on the desk. What? Ooh. <laughs> no way. I can't believe we forgot that. We forgot the arm. We forgot you the arm. The 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 <laughs> Some forensics are all. <laughs> She's driving. Wait. You forgot the arm. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, God, I knew. I always... One, two, three, one, four. God. God. <laughs> one Go ahead limb. and roll uh, one sanity. Lousy limb. Limb. Sanity? Oh, my God. Roll okay. sanity. Uh, sanity for unnatural. <laughs> 52 <laughs> under 60. Ooh. Wow. 52 under 60. She's standing it's nice. like, This just like duh, burns into your mind and similar to what just happened to the elevator. Like you blink your eyes and open and he's look, pointing to a report. The report that you turned in late God. after hours yesterday. Uh. <laughs> she uh, standing in the doorway. Jesus. Brushes <laughs> Jesus. her hair. Her pixie cut. Um, oh, um, Mr. Miller, I'm... I'm so sorry that I was late on the report. You know me. It's unlike me. I'm okay. And she then walks in and like sits down, uh, crosses her legs and kind of re recomposes herself. <sighs> Vicky, I know that. That's why this is very strange. I'm, I'm surprised to be honest. And it's not just that the report is late. Um, we were unable to file it uh, because of the amount of errors um, in there. I'm sorry to say, I'm, I'm not sure uh, if you were rushing or what, but there's several typos and some of which are repeating uh, and, you know, you see it once and think it's a typo, but when it happens again and again, I, there's something very very distracting happening here. And he like turns the report around and opens it up. And he's just like, here and here and here. You've got you've got the year listed for all of these incidents that you're discussing is 1924 instead of 1994. If it happened once, I, you know, I'd say it's a typo, but this is very, what is this, a find and replace? Or I couldn't even submit it. So I'm... I take full responsibility. Um, I will redo the report. Um, I'll work late. Um, I Frankly, I'm embarrassed. Uh, I don't like to... Um, I don't like to make errors. Um, and this is a, an egregious error, and I agree. Um, and... Whatever you have in store for me, Mr. Miller, I completely understand. Uh, okay. I'll okay, I appreciate that. And I think that you always do fantastic work. This is obviously an anomaly. And I just want to make sure that we get it right. And I'm happy to hear that you'll do it today. Today. And so I don't want to see anything else taking your priority today. I want to see you here working on this report and I need it this afternoon. Okay. Absolutely. No problem. Okay. Thank you, Vicki. That's this is as far as it'll go. All right. Understood. Oh, 
um, I'm not uh, distracted from this case. Uh, I just was wondering if you had seen Kali this morning. I just had to drop something off. Uh, no, I, I hadn't seen her yet. And he goes back to typing on his computer. She snatches the report and goes to her office and is truly embarrassed. This is like horribly, horribly embarrassing. Yeah, so as you had like rushed through this, there are several errors, but very strange to have this you dating all of these events that you're discussing that happened in 1994 as part of this criminal case uh, as 1924 over and over and over. Is this then related to the recent, like I'm just wondering, is this a weird thing that she didn't realize she did or is this related to all of the case files that she was sifting through, like the police reports and Abigail, like is this related to that or is this like a weird- There was no mention of, of yeah. anything in the 20s in those police reports that you were reading. Um, it does seem like not you, you have absolutely no memory of doing that. Figured, okay, so she's going to fix this report but in the meantime, make a separate list of the things that she was writing down to see if there's any like weird bleed that was happening in her brain. Um, okay, cool. So yeah. you start making a list. Yeah, because there's, there's other things too. We don't have to go into great detail, but like this isn't, that's why he thinks it's going to take hours because it's not just a matter of the years being typoed, right? There's, there's a lot of information that seems like crosswired as if you were, you know how sometimes when you're like half asleep and like you're falling asleep and you're writing and like you just start writing nonsense. Like yeah. there are some, there are some sentences like that and you start yeah. jotting down even the nonsense stuff on a side thing because you want to analyze, maybe psychoanalyze your own mind. Exactly. That's exactly what she wants to do. Yeah. Super creepy. Also. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. When did you put this together? When did you put this report she, together? She did this like right as we were first investigating the apartment. It was like she had to finish this and we had maybe seen the apartment for like one night. And she was no, like, this was case. just last night. This was, oh, this you was were, last you, night. This oh, was last due night. at five o'clock yesterday. Oh, but yes, you yes, turned yes. it in at like oh. seven, at seven and then met them at the bar. And then you all went over to yeah. it was a long night. It was like a yeah. four episode night. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I love that. Band. I myself forgot what I wrote on that report. So, of course, Vicky has no idea. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Your priorities were absolutely focused on this building and Abigail right at the time. OK, let's cut back to Roger. Roger, where do we pick up with Roger? What's he doing after this incident with Norma, where he has played out his projection? Uh, also, you know what? I'm just going to take this time to note that. Um, that uh, Bobby, you owe Janice two points of Shit, yeah. uh, bond damage, and oh. you owe Christopher three <laughs> points of bond damage, uh, Vicky. But I think that mm. we can also do that on Saturday because you're supposed to meet yeah. him Saturday. So just so you know, that it's like already foreshadowing. It's going to be a <laughs> terrible scene, <laughs> which sucks. But okay, sorry. Back to Roger. Uh, see Roger just darn out of bed. And he doesn't really know what's going on. He looks over to his uh, end table, and there's a uh, bottle of Jack Daniels with just like a sliver of Jack left in it. And he kind of fumbles around for the clock, finds the clock, sees what time it is, and then just like bursts up. And then from there we cut to the uh, mobile gas station on 96th and West End Ave. And he's just standing there. And uh car pulls up. Guy wanting gas. He's like, uh What can I get you? Ah, uh, fill it up, please. <laughs> Regular Premium. Premium. <laughs> Whoa. Big spender. <laughs> it's got a Lexus. <laughs> And uh, Roger takes his credit card and he presses the button for regular gas. <laughs> <laughs> Fills it up. Sees the guy. <laughs> Staring him like straight in the face as Wait, he does it. Thumbs up. <laughs> uh, runs the card. <laughs> You know, the says, funny thing is, I don't really think there was a button, right? In 95, there were three pumps, weren't there? I were think, there three pumps back I think then? there were three uh, pumps back then. Oh. Yeah, you didn't used to just, like, p 
pick whichever one you wanted. Uh, it's like, hey, yeah. hey, what are you doing? I said premium. No, yeah, that is premium. It's oh. uh, the stickers are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. What a, it's a long story. story. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, let me ask you about this, Troy. I was gonna, I was gonna bust your chops on this as well. Um, uh, s- Tuesday, this started. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. You did not go to or call the gas station. Uh, were you off? Uh, what days <laughs> didn't I go? Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. You no showed work. It just and so no happens called. that I, that's my schedule. I work Friday, <laughs> Saturday, Sunday. <laughs> Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. You work four yeah. days. <laughs> The weekend okay. is really busy. Every so. other Monday. <laughs> I'm not full time. Okay. Uh, All right. That works. That works yeah. for me. Uh, yeah. So I, <laughs> I have to I have to work. So he's just sitting around and he he's staring out into space. And where this gas station is, it's a real gas station. You can like look across the street and see into Riverside Park. Uh, and there's like an overpass uh, where people coming off the, the Hudson Parkway uh, can like come on to... Uh, the island proper and so he's just watching the cars and uh he kind of zones out and you hear uh like tropical music playing <laughs> and instead of standing at a gas station now he's standing on a beach somewhere <laughs> oh i wish i had a cute up. <laughs> oh. and he's got this like tommy bahama shirt on and uh in the distance, we see a uh, tractor trailer with a big ad for uh, Medalla Light beer on it. And he's just uh, looking at the ocean. And uh, he looks up at the sky, and there's a plane that's flying really low. And it just crashes into the ocean. Jeepers. <laughs> and he looks down. And out of the waves, a small little crab walks up to him with Michelle Van Fitz's head on it. (laughs) (laughs) And she's got something in her claw. He can't quite see what it is. So he just leans closer and closer and then just hears... And comes out of it and he's back at the gas station it's this guy just <laughs> are you done it clicked <laughs> off hello yeah yeah I'm done you shouldn't beep your horn it's very startling <laughs> <laughs> you reach down to grab the uh, gas pump uh, the handle that's in his uh in his car currently as you go to remove it and there's a severed woman's hand <laughs> on it already when you go to reach out for it he looks at the guy what's the hold up looks back it's not there nothing just wrapping up stop yelling <laughs> <laughs> puts the thing back he just flicks his credit, the guy's credit card into the car. <laughs> you gonna clean my window, chief? There's Spits bugs on it. It's on the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck oh, out of here. Oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> and a guy ah, scrambling to roll up his power windows <laughs> that make him so special. Puts his car into gear and <laughs> drives out uh, of the gas station. Well adjusted. Roger Cumstone at, at work. <laughs> Roger Just Career another day at the office. Attendant. Would you say that, so uh, I don't know what his shift is like. Uh, does he have a late shift on Fridays? Does he have a morning shift? Did he only sleep an hour or two, or do you think he got enough sleep to get rid of this penalty? He came home and just started drinking immediately, passed out, woke up with only like 10 minutes to spare before he had to get to work. Uh, I think he probably works a double sh- shift Friday, so he goes in at like 4 o'clock and works till 4 a.m. Hmm. Wow, okay. So he's got a long night ahead of him. And, you know, he, he's right at the brink of, of sanity loss, and it's really only going to take one more thing, I think, to put him over. His one little thing that he had was, was Norma. Obviously, he's got uh, Jimmy. Um, but 
he's he's really not doing well and he's he's kind of like lost he doesn't know if he's awake or asleep and i want to say you kind of rushed over it but jimmy is not in great shape either you know you you came in and jimmy (laughs) jimmy's got a bunch of shit in his cage uh he's pulling his own feathers out there's feathers in the bottom of the cage he's hungry you know so when you get in you realize that he's uh, he's neglected as well Oh, come on, Jimmy. Cleans him up, puts him in the bathtub, and scrubs him with a little toothbrush. (laughs) It's all right, Jimmy. It's all right. I'm just imagining this giant man brushing his fur. So sorry, Jimmy. He's detailing a parrot in his back. (laughs) Dumps all the shit out uh, into the toilet, like just everything, bird food, and he cleans it all up. And now Jimmy looks... He's still a mess. He's missing chunks of fur, but he's clean. And he just fills up his food bowl until it's overflowing. He says, I'm sorry, Jimmy. I got a lot going on. I'll, uh, I'll be sure to, I'll be sure to come home more often. All right. We'll cut to the Pine Barrens. Already be out of the car. And we see you guys just shoveling in the middle of the woods. It's now late morning, early afternoon. Roger is just, Roger's drunk and sleeping. Vicky is like going nuts on this report, trying to get it all squared away. And you guys are just digging and there is dirt all over your clothes or sweat pouring down your faces. And it's at this point, right around 12, and you've been feeling it coming all morning. And right then is when the skies open up oh, and that for three straight days of like 98 degree weather and 150 percent humidity just <laughs> open up and it just start and it starts pouring rain now you're in some heavily forested area so where you were actually out at the floor of the woods it's you know it's just drip drip dripping down but it's a heavy rain and you start to hear the distant, you know, (sighs) claps of thunder. So we gotta get this body buried before it gets soaked in here, before this this hole gets filled (laughs) with water. Yeah, yeah. So let's Uh, double time it. Let's double double time time it. it. Give me, uh, give me athletics rolls. Oh Oh, God. I don't know if that's (laughs) my strong suit won't go well. You two are not suited (laughs) for burying bodies. Oh wait, we're looking at athletics, right? Oh God. It takes such a long time to dig a hole deep enough for a body. Like truly it's so hard to do. the only oh, advantage we Remember have to minus twenty percent, please. It is summer. Oh, like we're not shit. doing this in midwinter. Yeah. True, it's, yeah. so yeah. it's soft. soft. It's soft. It's soft. Thankfully, but um, yeah, I definitely did not make it. minus twenty percent. Yeah, I'm uh, sixty nine over <laughs> over ten. Uh, well. Oh, yeah, yeah. My athletics are not strong. I'm not, I'm not okay, a strong. Uh, <laughs> over ten. All right. What about um, or now? Eighty three over ten. Yeah, so it takes you guys a yeah. long time yeah. to get this done, and it is, it's most of the day. It's getting into the afternoon. Jeez. You're dying. Jeez. You haven't gone to City Hall. It's oh, about to God. be the weekend and closed yeah. all weekend. Oh, fuck. Yeah. For God's yeah. sakes, Francis, can you can you get <laughs> to City Hall for <laughs> damn it? I need answers. Um, need to but find it does, y- y- you may have, you may have some time. Uh, you guys are at this for let's say five, six straight hours, oh, God. and you you get it done enough, enough uh, <laughs> that you bury these things, and the ground is getting you know wetter and wetter. Uh, but you guys look in <laughs> rough, rough shape. Uh, you get back in the car and head back. What do you do with the shovels? Shit. Uh, leave them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, should we stash them? We'll stash them. Uh, we stash them like a couple miles away as we're driving like out, we'll, like stop and like take them off the path a little bit, dirt road and like stash them like okay. a couple miles away from the burial site. Right, then, right. Wipe them, yeah, wipe them down. Wipe them down with prints. Yeah, wipe them Please. down. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, we're using gloves and everything. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Both of you roll uh, alertness. Oof. Boy. Minus, minus 20. 20. Minus 20. Oh, I can't even... <laughs> I got a 20 over uh, zero. 
48, <laughs> 48 over 20. <laughs> 48 over 20. 48 over 20. Okay. No. Uh, you feel like you're alone. You feel like nobody has spotted any of this activity. And you start <laughs> heading back to the city in the afternoon. And we're soaked, I'm guessing. We're soaked in Oh, you're soaked mud. and you're full of mud. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Your shoes are just so done in. And uh, I think Neil, like to keep himself sane, is like he's talking about m- famous movie scenes where they're like hiding bodies. <laughs> so it's like there is this having this, this and then it's like these good fellas, you know, when they have they they stab. Like he, he's just walking through these scenes, and like <laughs> and I'm that. picturing this kind of like it's a cross between the Pine Barrens episode and like my favorite scene in Ghostbusters, where it's oh. like. Where they're uh, driving, uh, yeah. Where dead. Ray and Winston are driving in the car, and it's just, <laughs> yeah. you ever think the reason we've been so busy lately is because the, the dead have been rising for the grave. Like that scene, like yeah, that's that's the we're having some bonding. We can't put a little thing yeah. out, I guess. But yeah, that's yeah. Um, and uh, Bobby's like, uh, he's listening. He's like, uh, uh, Goodfellas. That's a that's a Scorsese movie. Yeah, like, Scorsese. Taxi driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it's pretty like, recent. Okay. Uh, recent okay. movie that he did. It's I haven't very, seen it yet, but uh, yeah. I'll check it out. <laughs> well, yeah, it's took it a lot of hints, I think, for the kind of work that we might have to do like this in the future. Like, All right. Keep yeah. that in mind. Yeah. Um, I also think that you tell me if this isn't happening. I don't want to. I don't play your characters, but I think I see both of you together in a way that maybe um, you guys don't see, which is. I think Bobby has a real, this is Bobby's first time in the field, and I think he has a real aversion to uh, gr- to accepting that there is unnatural you know, events occurring yeah. here and that there must be some rational explanation for it. Yes. Um, Murnau, more than anybody else, uh, Neil, Dr. Bachman, more than anyone else, uh, is would be able to communicate to him that the unnatural sure as shit does exist. This is and, why it's and, like uh, that Ghostbusters scene. Yeah, yeah, so I'm playing okay. Ray, same, basically. Same dynamic. Like, <laughs> like why? Right. Why? How? Yeah. How is that building? What are the night floors? How is that building doing what it did? Yeah. Like, there's got to be answers. Yeah. Gotta and get I, the think, I think Neil might sort of talk around some of his ex- what his experience was like in the Amazon. Like, I don't think he gets into it directly, but I think he kind of just hints at some of the stuff that he saw yeah I love it the The bonding bonding time can I ask about the Amazon I want to can I like is he is that something that he's brought up before that I could be like what did you see yeah I think this is the first time I've mentioned it to any of you and I'm reluctant to do it um so I think I talk about kind of what led up to it Douglas is always filming. Um, it's one of my first documentary projects that I wanted. This, this tr- tribe, like deep, far farthest reaches of the river, and they had very little to no contact with Western society, and we were able to maneuver through the government to get the permission to do this project with them spent two weeks getting up there and like so he talks all the way up to it and then but he doesn't actually say what he saw this is driving Bobby crazy yeah. <laughs> this, is dri- this, this is none of this makes sense yeah none I mean he's an analyst right like sense. he wants the yeah. every last there detail got to be an explanation yeah we gotta get back to city hall he starts talking like the minute he gets up to it he starts talking about like Fitzcarraldo or something and he's just like just starts talking about another movie and it's just like you know it's kind of like changes the subject all right bobby literally wants to go straight to city hall <laughs> bobby is like driving i mean we got to return this truck and probably yeah, get right. cleaned up and we, yeah we should stop at a gas station in jersey somewhere just get washed up a little bit like in the the, the bathroom yeah we'll do a quick you know? just like fast and dirty clean up yeah. on the way stop on the turnpike whatever get back in the car go straight for city hall we're not even returning the truck we're just going to straight can we make it there before it closes yeah all right 
Well, roll right. drive. Roll drive. I oh. got drive. I got drive. Let's see how 20. much time you got. Ooh, I got five under 20. Wow. Whoa. I win one. I win one. Wow. I'll take one win. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> You're flying down. Was that with the minus awesome. 20? Oh, shit. Is that with the minus 20? Oh, God, then it's five over zero. God five damn. over zero. Oh, Another fail. It. I'd really uh, recommend sleep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You <laughs> you will make it, though, uh, with a little time to spare. Yeah, because we can't get pulled over. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah no. Exactly. Exactly. Like, you yeah, can't yeah. be speeding. Yeah. <laughs> what are you gentlemen um, doing out here? <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, just out the bike barons, two guys. Uh, <laughs> two guys. Shovel, guys. You see any shovels in here? There's nothing. <laughs> just a couple guys mud fighting. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> mud fighting out the back. It's a little mud wrestling <laughs> practice, you know, that's all. Mud wrestling <laughs> practice. Pine bears. Mud. <laughs> Deep training for <laughs> We're in a co-ed mud, mud wrestling, wrestling championships in September. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. So we make it. We barely make it to City Hall. Okay. All right. I, Bobby's excited. He's going straight All right, for the. So we, you got yourself cleaned up enough. Yeah. Uh, and do you want to race into City Hall? And you feel like shit. Yes. <laughs> um, Bobby has pills for this, though. He's got pills. He has. Um, what do we got? Uh, we've got some uppers. We've got some uppers for uh, some prescription uppers. Adderall. We're doing Adderall. Nice. Oh, you want to do it? Yeah, let's do it. You can do it. All right, so I, you, you pop. can pop some in the middle of the day before you head into City Hall. Are you going to yeah. take any more now? No. Okay. Uh, yeah, go gonna ahead start, and roll. I'm going to like start nodding off. Like, uh, you don't get wet. You don't get wet. You don't get wet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <You> don't get <laughs> wet. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's done. Like as far as he, this is the hard part of this is done. Out. like his yeah, part, yeah. like so he's just gonna like just he's cruising and sees, like okay All i right. mean you could just go home yeah if you want it i could drop like, him you, off you don't have to go to city hall you know yeah i could drop you off right now i'll stay with him but i'll stay in the car but i'll i'll probably like be asleep in the car like while he's in city hall all right all okay right. um all right, so you stay in the car and that that pattering and pattering and pattering of rain is enough to like have you doze off we see uh, makeshift disappear into the doors of city hall uh, I want to check in with Vicky uh, Vicky how are you making out give me a, give me a bureaucracy roll okay let's see how the work is coming if you're smoothing things over here minus 20 percent my oh because I, I can't smoke again oh right I'm sorry you can if you want I forgot. Yeah. But you'll, you'll take willpower damage. Okay. Go well, ahead. I rolled a five initially. So am I still within the range or do it? Should I roll again? No. I yeah. This is in the later in the afternoon. You've been working all day. They're getting to city hall right at the end. Roger's shift is already underway. We're okay. Friday's moving quick. A lot quicker than Thursday did. <laughs> right, my cat is on my desk. Come on. Let me roll. Oh, six. <laughs> Ooh. Cat interference. Okay. Six <laughs> hours. Uh, now roll uh, a D six for willpower point damage. Wait, a D6? Mm-hmm. For, well, oh, for willpower point damage. Yeah, right. Yes. One. Oh, man. Everything's <laughs> coming up, Vicky. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I'm back, baby. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let me do that. Will, willpower point damage. Okay. Uh, so one so point. You should be down like three or four at this point. Yeah, I'm not doing well. <laughs> uh, I'm alive. Uh, okay. Yeah, you're alive. You just the willpower point damage. It just represents you being unable to like mentally continue on. Uh, all right. All right. Let's see. Roll that oh. bureaucracy roll. No minus twenty. Oh yes. Okay. Then I they will look it. Okay. Fifty. Well, so close. Fifty five under sixty. That's still a crit. Yeah. That's Ooh, still a crit. Nice. Uh, all Ooh. right. So you crush it. You clean this report up and get everything squared away but you do notice that there were several mistakes when you were distracted uh by this whole thing um which is very odd uh all right let's go back to city hall um okay francis you walk in and uh you get yourself to the property records department okay. uh and there's a man sitting behind the counter and uh, he is redhead, red beard, uh, pale skin, 
heavy set and uh, a little pimply uh greasy kind of shiny skin he's got uh big thick glasses on okay and you walk in and like the first thing he does because it's like 440 is he's like oh <laughs> <laughs> All right, I go. I go straight in. I go straight in with the FBI badge. I'm flashing it. I'm going. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm going to need your assistance, sir. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to need all the records for this building uh, at. Well, I can't remember the address. Two ten East Thirty Second Street. Two ten East Thirty Second Street. Uh, I need schematics. I need a bill of sale, a blueprints, every piece of information you have on this building, please now uh, uh private residence or commercial it's it's an apartment building an apartment building owned by a commercial business um, a, the, a rental company uh it's a uh, building management company yes yes it's a management company um, then you're in the wrong place you need to go down to the commercial van <laughs> event and then oh, wow. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> start shooting Bobby, yeah, Bobby's got his hand in his cup. <laughs> and he, like, a long thinks, day, he man. We'll have a it. really, really hard time being <laughs> less respectful uh, to you as uh, as an FBI officer. Well, not officer, but you know. Yeah. Um, uh, okay. So I'm like, I'm not even trying to deal with this guy. I go to the right. To, I go so to the yeah, other you desk. go down the hallway and you find yourself at uh, the commercial uh, and business uh whatever property department and uh there there's a lovely young lady uh sitting behind the counter you come in and she says hi how can i help you hi i'm needing your help dark need- hair light skin oh i love your hair by the way thank you um uh, thank you so much <laughs> yes <laughs> Oh my Gorgeous. goodness! <laughs> I need your assistance. I need all the information on this building. Um, hmm. I need blueprints. I need uh, ownership records. Whatever you have on oh. this building. Okay, let me see what I can find. And she gets up and she goes in. And she looks very competent, very quick on it. Bip, 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 bip. Uh, and as you can see, you know, as you know, it's like getting getting to the end of the day. Um, she comes out with this big file. And she's like, I think this is it. And uh, sets it down. You said 210 East 32nd, uh, the McAllister building. Does that sound right? Yep. That's that's it. Exactly. Here it is. Uh, I'm sorry, honey. You only have about 15 minutes. So uh, keep it quick. Okay. We got to close up here soon. Um, I'm going to need to go through this for a while. Is there any way I can take this with me? Um in, uh, oh, no, no, no. Sorry. It, it can't leave the records room, but you could look at it uh, for 15 minutes, and then we open up at 9 a.m. on Monday. Do I have a camera? I have cameras, right? Can I just can I flip through and take photos of it, or is this, this is too big of a file? Is this too big of a file to take, to take pictures? I don't of? know if you, do you, carry, you carried Polaroid pic- cameras around with you? Oh, yeah. The fuck? This is I have. You could use mine. Um, I have one. Well, we had them from the apartment. We had them had from them the to apartment. Take photos of the apartment, but I, I thought didn't I have no? Didn't I have a digital one? I thought I had a digital one. Is I don't think there early? are digital ones. Are there like ones? easily Shit, no. to have for government employees? I don't think so. No, 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 no. Um, okay, fifteen minutes. I just flip through it. I got okay. Flip through so it. boom, you open Fuck it up <clears throat> and you start flipping through. You start digging in. There's a lot of shit in here. But one of the first things that jumps out at you uh, is blueprints. There are blueprints. Uh, so why don't we, uh, why don't you go over to roll to one zoni? Ooh. 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 Oh, uh, wow. Finally get you guys back there. Uh, it's been a minute. I actually wasn't even ready. It's still loading. I I'm thought there. we were just doing role play. <laughs> 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 uh, my my roll 20 froze uh, I'll get it to you in a second but there is a set of blueprints you immediately see laying out the, the floor plan of the building uh, you also as you're flipping through you see the name of the architect which lines up with what Lewis Post was telling you uh, it is uh, there, okay let, let's go back to the uh, building permit a building permit was issued on May 27th 1921 and it's issued 
to a man named Henry M. Lundeen. We'll go into this more if you can go back, but this is all going to come at you quick, and I, I'm not giving you any notes or anything. So, you know, write, write down what you want, and you could have a notepad <laughs> there writing this stuff down. But Henry Lundeen, Lundeen. Uh, is the permit owner of the building. Uh, assigned as the architect for the building in 1921 is Asa Darabandi. Ah, uh-huh. uh, shit. Assigned Darabandi. as the architect for the building. Uh, you see that permit. You also see that the building is completed in 1924. It is finished being built in 1924. You turn a page and there's a loose piece of paper in there that uh, jumps out. Seems, I mean, it, it shocks you as you turn it. There's a cream colored piece of stationery embroidered at the top Hotel Broadlebin, New York oh, City. Oh. Underneath uh, it, hmm. in nice. handwriting, all it is is a piece of hotel stationery, just like the one you saw before. Uh, sorry, I am, I got a, my roll 20 is, it was not working, but now it is. Uh, the, uh, I'll move you over to it and uh, we can put that up on stream there. Um, uh, the one that I showed you before is over to the right side of the board. Okay. Uh, th- this one I'm moving around here. That is the, um, the exact same stationery, but it has nothing on it, but handwriting. It just has s- someone's handwriting. And it says, I saw the rooms tonight at dusk. Oh, jeez. Oh, That's all it says. I saw. Wow. Also uh, attached to this, you see a page that is rather plain, white paper, but old, with a series of typewritten numbers on it in a line. Each line has a number sign and then about eight, it's eight numbers. You realize every number is eight digits long, zero, zero, one, two, one, two, five. Uh, uh, sorry, it's a lot here. Um, so annoying. Uh, 0165822336598425. There's no real pattern that you can discern. However, with a... Did you say you had a 70% in criminology? Yeah. Yep. I can tell you with a 70% in criminology that these numbers could easily correlate to case numbers in criminal records. And a lot of times... Uh, if there is a crime committed at a location, it will be notated within oh. the records of the building. And it's just sort of like a reference. It's like case number this, 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 this. Huh. But those case numbers would be on file in the criminal records department, which is a, a different department. But you would be able to cross-reference them. Yeah. Okay. So I'm taking all these case numbers out. Yeah. So you just start like furiously uh, them all down. jotting down case numbers. Yeah. Okay. 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 Holy crap. You see that there is uh, another permit as you, you're flipping through, you're, you're running out of time here as you're soaking this all in. Um, you see that there is an addendum to the permit that's, uh, in, that's added in 1953. And it's uh, because originally the permit was for a private residence for someone named Henry M. Lundeen. It was a private residence permit. In 1953, an addendum permit is added where the building is refitted as an apartment building and sold to a building management company. Do they have the, do we have the name of that company there? Is that, or is this the company that currently? It is not the company that currently owns it. No, it's called Clark Enterprises Inc. Is who it it is sold to then. And then there is another uh, data in 1973. It is taken over by Art Life, which is the current building management company. And that's the company that gives like discounted rooms to artists. Correct. That's the company that gives like yeah low income housing to artists. Should look into that. Yeah, and it sucks not having the internet. Yeah, I know. Really, I know. Gotta actually go places and I know. books and shit. <laughs> I know yeah. Who is in charge of art life? <laughs> what do they know about this building? Yeah, art life. Um, from nineteen seventy three. 
All right, so we got to... Is there anything else in oh, there? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I just got the, the corporation wrong. It's called Star Corporation, not Clark Enterprises. Star Corporation is the owner. Uh, and then it's 1967 that it gets bought by Art Life, not 1973. Oh. Sorry. Um, it's all good. 67. Yeah. There is an internet. There is an internet in 1995. You got to be a little savvy to get into it. If you've got a computer skill, you can roll on it. Um, I went to an but internet cafe in one of the there, earlier episodes. Yeah, there is yeah. an internet. Okay, I have a 40 computer science, um, but is it, we're still minus 20? No, I've got Ritalin in me. I've got Ritalin go. in me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're good. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a 40. Uh, so you're, let me... You're not at an internet lounge. I'm you're, not at a, You are at the city records office. Let me tell you where you are, friends. Right. I uh, know you're at the city <laughs> records office and you and she's like, okay, time's up. I'm so sorry, but you can come back Monday. It'll be here. You can take all the time you need. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, no problem. You should come back Monday. Oh. I just might. Huh? <laughs> What's your name again? Sandy. Sandy. <laughs> You're a doll, Sandy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like Sandy. Let's see more of Sandy. Yeah, like Sandy, Sandy is... Uh, I'll be back Monday. I'm Sandy invested. Sandy like Bobby. That's what I think. <laughs> Let's kill Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> if Sandy dies, I quit. Sandy's my favorite character on the show. <laughs> Let's drive Sandy out to the Pine Barrens. Let's um, never invite Unfortunately, Messiah. your your criminal records reference will have to wait till Monday um, because okay. you know that that's going to be closed up, but you could you know follow up that research on monday yeah and we've got all the info that we can get off off of that uh, in the city hall so yeah okay all right <sighs> bobby's gonna gonna wrap it up he's gonna get back in the truck he's gonna get murnau now slow down okay slow down okay <laughs> i'm like let's go Relax, let's go bobby i'm so full of riddling let's do it i know so you're man's on a ton of riddling <laughs> Bobby comes out of City Hall, walks down the big steps, and there's no parking right there. Uh, Murnau is dozing a couple blocks uh, down the road where you were able to park, where you were able to find a spot. Uh, we see Bobby walking along, uh, heading toward the parking spot, and it's pouring. It, is, it has been raining all day. Do you have a, a raincoat? Do you have a hat? Do you have an umbrella? Anything? I've got, I've got like my suit jacket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Bobby's like, right. Yeah. He's got his, his suit jacket over his head, just walking along. And all of a sudden, we just hear <laughs> the quick screech of car tires right next to him as a black like SUV, like large size suburban size SUV with tinted windows grinds to a halt next to him. The doors fly open and these two huge dudes jump out of the car, throw a hood over Bobby's head, oh my throw God. him in the back of the car, Jesus. shut the door and screech off down the street. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, and shit. we'll see you next week. Oh my God. <laughs> This is terrible. <laughs> Tell my story. <laughs> Tell my story. <laughs> <laughs> no. God. Oh. <sighs>